So we want to welcome our online viewers. Uh, right now we're going to do the tithe and offering teaching for you. Uh, we're going through uh, some Bible verses. We're going to start off in Ecclesiastes um, on the book chapter 11. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. I have assigned some Bible scriptures uh, which I will reiterate once again. Uh, we're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. We will then uh, look at Isaiah chapter 32, verse 20. We will hop <coughs> over to Psalms 112, <coughs> verse 9. From there, we will hop over to Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. We'll go to Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And finally, one with 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 through 9. So I kind of like uh, delegated all these Bible verses, um, and as I'm teaching and I ask for the Bible verse to be read, uh, you'll hear one of the ladies uh, read the Bible verse. So uh, so just really quick uh, teaching on why giving is important. Why do we give? It's important that we have a level of understanding. How many know that we serve God with our mind? Amen. Amen. Right? So yeah, the emotions are part of it. But we have to understand why we do things. There's got to be a level of comprehension so that way when we have the data, when we have the information, the biblical principles as to, oh, now I get it. Then when we then we're able to make the decision of how to give and, and, and make sure that our heart is fixed on exactly on what God desires. Right. We've always said it's not about the amounts, but it's a matter of the heart. Giving is about the heart. Amen. Amen. Right. And so. Um, I'm going to take a few uh, a few minutes to explain a few things um, so that um, we can understand why we give, uh, why we give to God, right? Um, and so I have here important to understand the why we give. When we have understanding of God's word, we can surrender what we know has been given to us by God and thus incur the blessings of multiplication. How many know that God gives us in multiplication? Amen. 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 So in other words, when I put my money to... Uh, when we put our money to work for us, we put it to work, and when we trust God, we're investing, we're giving to Him. And know that we can never outbeat God. We, we just, God doesn't need our money, but He's working with us in a matter of our heart. And when we do it His way, we see the God results. Amen? Amen. So, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 and 2 says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what the evil will be on the earth. For you do not know what evil will be on the earth. And I'm reading off of the New King James Version. So I have uh, selected other versions. One um, is the Message Version. The Message says, be generous. Be generous. Invest in acts of charity. Charity yields high returns. Don't hoard your goods. Spread them around. Be a blessing to others. This could be your last night, right? And so when we're talking about generous, generosity, right? People who are generous. Uh, it's, it's the readiness. Uh, it's the position that people place themselves in heart-wise, mind-wise, that when there is a need, let me see what I can give. Let me see how I can help. Let me see what I can sow. So there is a readiness. There is, it's a disposition of an attitude inwardly in our heart to be able to be generous, right? Uh, invest. Uh, invest means uh, expend money with an expectation of achieving a profit. How many know that when we sow into God's kingdom, it's an investment? Amen. Because how many know that you will, without a shadow of doubt, receive a return? Amen. Amen. Yes. And so when it talks about Invest in acts of charity, charity, charity. Uh, when we think about charity, we're talking about organizations set up to provide help and raise money for those in need. Okay, so charity yields high returns, meaning when I give, uh, when I sow financially, because this we're talking just financially, we could be talking also kindness. We can talk about um, being generous with words. Uh, being generous in our attitude, being generous, being kind to those that don't have, uh, giving a meal, right? So there's different ways, but in this one we're, we're dealing with is with money, okay? And so, uh, again, the charity is an organization or a place that 
It's to give to the poor. It's to give to those that don't have. Um, and I think that many of you have seen in the city of Aurora, right, even the city of Elgin, uh, you know, you've just seen people in the streets, people with signs asking, you know, and, and so you use... You use wisdom. You use common sense because we know that this is something that many people have taken on. Then they, hey, why do I have to work when I can live off, right, of a sign? And so we use discretion. That's why we, we, we pray and we ask the Lord, give me wisdom so that way I'll know where I'm going to sow. Because I want to be able to sow somewhere that it's fertile ground. It's a good ground. Amen? Amen. And so when it says cast your bread, it's, it's talking about, uh, when we're talking about bread here, okay, Bread, uh, but everybody knows what bread is, yes? Loaf of bread, everybody loves, us Puerto Ricans love pan con mantequilla. Ooh, we love that stuff. And now when we're on diets and we're restrictions and we don't eat that stuff, that's like, <gasps> no, we can't, I'm like, oh. But bread doesn't start off as bread. Bread, become, it starts off as a seed, yes? Yes. So it's in a seed form. Who's got 2 Corinthians 9.10? This generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant toward you. First he supplies every need plus more. Then he multiplies the seed as you sow it, so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. Amen. That's Second Corinthians 9.10. So it's talking about the seed that is given to the sower, right? And so when, when, when Solomon is talking, cast your bread, what he's talking about, A, uh, cast your seed, what you have, cast it, sow it, right? Uh, cast has a uh, implication of you're literally tossing it. You're with force. You're, you're automatically letting it go, right? As opposed of to holding on to it and kind of like vacillating as to should I sow or should I not, should I? No, he's like, just take it and toss it out. Cast it, cast your bread, cast that seed, Upon the waters. Waters is another, when we start seeing the book of Revelation, and it talks about symbolisms, water represents, not all, you know, we see waters and everybody's like, oh, that means the Holy Spirit, right? But waters also represent humanity. Cast your seed upon the humanity. Which one? The ones that are the poor, the widows, the uh, orphan. Cast to those that are in need, Right? And then you will find it back in men after many days. And here we see that 2 Corinthians 9.10 tells us that he who supplies seed to us, or who's the one that gives us seed? God. God. God gives us a seed. Believe you me, whether it be one or two, that we know that that seed, it says here, it's the seed to the sower and bread for food. Meaning, I'm going to give to you and you're going to use it so that you have for your home and your supply. But then he says... I'm going to multiply your seed when you sow it. I will multiply it when you do what I'm asking you, which is invest and give to charity. Give give to, to, to the good ground. And you're going to see that then I'll come and I'll fulfill my part, right? And then I will multiply the seed that you have sown, and I'm going to increase the fruits of your righteousness. And oftentimes, when we receive from God, we receive more. I'm, I'm going to go back to that verse exceedingly and abundantly more than what we have asked or what that we expected, right? So He has given us more than that. So when I cast my seed upon fertile soil, it's the good ground. It's a, it's a, whether whether you know, I'm, I'm going to make sure that if it's a ministry, I'm going to make sure the ministry, you know. I, I want to know about it. I want to know what they're doing. How do they use their funds? You know. Uh, here that you give, you're giving to love and action. You, right now we have deep waters. You're giving to sustain this facility, to prepare us and, and to go into our next round, right? Which like Ali says, yeah, the Lord showed me a demo about the temple. I've been praying about a temple, you know. And so God has spoken about a temple, but he's going to check us out first and check our faithfulness and our commitment. And we'll talk about that in this lesson. I want you to keep that in mind because faithfulness is important. We're talking about authority, so I'm going to see what you do with the little that I've given you. And can you be faithful with this? Can you sustain this? Can you, can you, do you have a heart enough to also give? Because now we see that Solomon says, give a serving to seven and also eight. For you do not know what evil will be on worth. He's not talking about, he's not talking about just give one time. He says, are you able to continue giving? Not just one person, but seven, but eight. Can you, can you expand your giving? Can you, can you sow to God and and, and, it's, and what he's talking about is a lifestyle. What he's talking about is a lifestyle. So 
cast out your seed, throw it in fertile soil, and it will, in its season, return to the sower with a larger increase than what you initially started with. I planted, Dan and me, we went to the garden, we planted some tomatoes. I love tomatoes, and I love Roma tomatoes, and I love those little um, um, cherry tomatoes, right? And so we put maybe two or three little seeds, and out of it came a bushel, and now there's, I mean, multiple, multiple, multiple seeds in those tomatoes that I could plant, dry them out, plant, and have ton. I can have just a garden full of just plain tomatoes from one one tomato. So that's what I want you guys to understand. Who's got Isaiah 33, 20? Blessed are you who sow besides all waters, who send out freely the feet of the ox and the donkey. So blessed. It's talking about that we will be blessed. How many here want to be blessed? Amen. We are blessed. We're happy. We're fortunate. Why? Because we cast our seed upon the waters. Okay, when the river overflows its banks and irrigates the land, you who allow the ox and the donkey to roam freely. So you cast your seed upon the waters. Again, it's talking about humanity. Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. I looked it up in the Passion Translation. Okay, I'm sorry, not the Passion Translation, the Living Bible Translation. The Living Bible says, Give generously. For your gifts will return to you later. What you sow, it'll come back to you. Okay? It says, divide your gifts among many, for in the days ahead, you yourself may need much help. How many know that what, what we're literally doing, when we show ourselves merciful, that's because we know God will be merciful to us. When we are forgiving to others, we know that God will forgive us. So there's this relationship thing there's this flow that what we do unto others it will ultimately we're sowing for ourselves and we're not only sowing for ourselves we're sowing for our generations Amen. Amen. we're sowing for our grandchildren we're sowing for our great grandchildren so 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 god is establishing here uh what is called a pattern of blessing okay so uh king solomon here in in the book of ecclesiastes chapter 11 so he's talking about giving freely Giving with wisdom, okay? And sometimes we can have this because based on our past experiences, right, we might have a distorted perception and say, well, no, because I gave and it was in the wrong place and no, you know, we have all of these perceptions and sometimes we can even perceive and think that, well, I'm going to throw my money away by giving it to these poor people. Well, I'm going to give and they can't give me back. But isn't that exactly what God wants to teach us? Can you give to somebody who can't give back to you? Or do you give always expecting something in return? Because if you give to somebody, oh, I'm going to give you a gift here that's for you. But you're giving and your motive is, so when it's my turn, I want you to, to give it back to me. And, and, you know, if you have, then don't give at all. But do you know how to give to somebody who can't repay you? Yeah. But you better believe that the word of the Lord, who's got, uh, who's got uh, some... Uh, no, 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 no. Proverbs 19, 17. I do. Read that. <clears throat> this is a, uh, the Passion Translation. Okay. Every time you give to the poor, you make a loan to the Lord. Don't worry. You'll be repaid in full for all the good you've done. So when we give, right, even the person can't give back, that's okay. Because when we give to folks, we're really giving to God. We're loaning to God, meaning God will bring back to us. He'll repay us. And how many know that God repays? Amen. Oh, yeah. God repays. So <clears throat> Solomon is talking here is give to someone who cannot give you back, right? And one of the key things that you have to understand is that riches cannot profit us if we do not benefit others. I'm going to say it slowly. Riches, in other words, wealth, will not profit us. If we do not benefit others. And that's the problem that may I, I'm not being, uh, I'm not being uh, 
uh, racist or I'm not being, I'm not just singling out. But unfortunately, the Latino people do not know what the gift of giving is. They they have a hard time, a mm -hmm. concept of being able to sow. Uh, they only, you know, it's too hard. And, and oftentimes we see like, wow, we see the American churches and we see other, it's like, why do they grow? Why do they expand? Why? Because they're not, they're not afraid to sow. They're not afraid to, they understand the concept of sowing and then God increases. But the fact of the matter is when I get a seed and I hold on to it and I'm just stingy and I'm not generous with that and I eat my own seed, what is God going to, he cannot multiply. He can't move through that. It is the key, the key, the key here is when I sow it in somebody else's territory, then God will come and do Amen. what he says he will do. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Who's got Psalms 112.9? Mm -hmm. Read it, Lexi. Um, he has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His form is exalted in honor. Amen. So he has given freely to the poor. That, that in our heart would have what Jesus had in his heart. The love for the downtrodden, the love for those that have been casted, the love and, and the compassion for those that did not have, that we would, that would be within us. Amen. Who's got Luke 6, 38? Me. Go ahead, read it. Give and you will receive. Mm -hmm. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. Mm. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Mm, mm, mm. Read that last part again. That's a standard right there. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. So you have to understand that God is a God of investment. Y'all know that. Mm -hmm. So in kingdom, right, What my question to you is, what is your standard of measurement in giving? Well, if the preaching is really good, I'll give something. Well, if the pastor gives me a part, I'll give something. Well, if I feel like I'm family here, I'll give something. What is your standard? Well, I'm sorry. Um, and for example, um, I had the experience and I was like, that's interesting, Lord. And I didn't judge it. I just kind of like, that's interesting. And I said, Lord, I hope that my heart will always be willing to always give you the best that you deserve. You know, that I don't, you know, I know that we, we, we live by, hopefully, you know, we're living by budgets. We, you know, we accommodate stuff. But, 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 but when I, when I, I talked to somebody one time and, um, and then they were teaching and I was listening and I was like, that's interesting because the person said, you know, nope, as soon as I, you know, get my check, I take out to my tithes and then I already, every month I give this much of offering. That's it. And I was like, so I was like, well, that's good that you, you know, separate that. That's okay. You know, you're working with your budget. But what if God requested more of you? Would you be flexible enough to give? What if Holy Spirit all of a sudden just like, and said, you need to give this much. Would you accommodate? Would you open up to give that? You know, and so it's like, Lord, keep me sensitive. Keep my heart tender. Right, that when you are really moving and you say, No, give this, that I would be willing to, that I trust you enough, that I know that it's you, that I'm like, Okay, yes, I'm on a budget, yeah, I'm good, but I'm gonna trust you because oftentimes, and we've heard many testimonies through here, our breakthrough comes in that soul. Our breakthrough, what we're praying for for our children, what we're praying for in jobs, or for our husbands, or for a relationship, or for a business venture, or whatever, we're praying. And then God will test us. How many know that God has the right to test us? Mm -hmm. And so he'll be like, your breakthrough is going to come through one way, and it's a soul. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that. Uh, give, and it shall be given unto you. When you give, just be prepared because there's always a return. There's always a return, right? Who's got 2 Corinthians uh, 9, 6, 9? This is going to, what, what this is going to talk about is going to talk about the cheerful giver, but it's going to kind of like uh, um, enhance what Luke is talking about uh, in terms of the standard of measurement. Now we're going to see Paul here discussing in terms of the standard. And he really, Paul is a cutthroat oh apostle. He's like, I'm just going to come and transparently be clean to you. It's going to be a little bit rough, but hold on to your, you know, hold on to your seat. Hold, put your seatbelts on. I was going to say pantyhose, but let me just not. <laughs> Go ahead, read 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 9. Sorry. Uh, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must decide in your heart 
how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Mm -hmm. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Mm -hmm. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Mm -hmm. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered yes. forever. Yes. So, again, going with what Luke was saying is, you know, um, he talks about, for with the standard of measurement you use, right? I don't know what your standard of measurement is. Mm -hmm. But then when Paul talks, he says, well, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you sow generously, you're going to reap generously. And so he talks about, he, he gives us a standard, but then he gives us the ultimate punch. And he says, but the Lord loves a what? Cheerful. Cheerful. What kind of giver? Cheerful. Cheerful. Right. So let each give as he pur purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, because God loves a cheerful, cheerful. 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 giver. So again, back to Ecclesiastes to wrap this up. Solomon calls us to take a step of faith. Solomon is challenging us. Take a step of faith. You know why? He advises us that the use of faith will always contain an element of perceived Risk of loss because we do not know the end of the beginning. Let me expand on that. We want insight as to how this sowing of the seed is going to benefit us in the long run. <laughs> so then we can freely get, but that's not faith. If I'm thinking, well, um, how is this going to benefit me? And so we already know God's told us in his word what he's going to do. You don't have to worry about the wind. You don't have to worry about how much. Just be prepared because when God blesses and God returns, he returns 100%. How many know that? Amen. Right? And so the fact is that if I am like questioning, if I'm like, let me see. Well, what are you going to do with this? Well, wh where are you going to? Well, let me see. What is this going to do for me? That's not faith. Faith is, you know what? I don't need to know where this is going. I don't need to know. Um, I don't need to know if this is going to bring me back a result. I just have to step out in faith and know that God is not a God who would lie. He's not the son of man that would repent. But just as he has said and stated in his word, he's going to do. And faith means I'm going to believe. I'm going to trust. Therefore, I'm going to do. Amen. Amen. And so Solomon says, it's not going to work out for us. It's not going to work out right unless we make the decision to commit ourselves to live by faith. And how many know that that's what God expects of us? Amen. Is to live by faith. So he says, cast your bread upon the waters. Cast your lot with God. Take the risk. Amen. Amen. So that's the teaching for the tithing and the offering for today. So Amen. as we get our offerings, as we get our tithing together, remember this word. Remember this word. Know that, that when you sow... Uh, you're not sowing uh, to Grizel or Dan. This is not coming to us. This is not. I want you guys to understand that I'm living by faith. I, I'm telling you, I've been having to pray and pray and pray because I have been tempted, tempted, tempted. Um, I, going and just submitting my application for a job because I don't get paid here. Everything I do, I'm trusting God. I'm relying on God. And so today, as I was like going through the lesson and just being, Lord was ministering to me in a special way, The I was like so nervous. Every time my thought would go on the application, I would get like these butterflies, like nervous, like don't just trust God, just stay put, trust God. So it's a measure of faith that I have to obey, that I have to submit to. But this, that money that comes here, that comes to the ministry, it doesn't come into our pockets. If you guys are sustaining this place right here, you guys are helping to take care of other missionaries. You guys are helping also to when you sow to other evangelists that also come here to deposit words. So nothing comes to us. But what we're doing is we're being faithful with the little that God gives us. We're being faithful. We're remaining faithful to wait on God to bring the return because he will bring the return. Amen. And so what happens is what you have facilitated all of us in our giving, we have got now cameras. We now have, uh, you know, the ability to, to shoot out online. Now, uh, people from distance learners are able to appreciate, receive the word. And that stuff is starting to, like, spread, uh, which I knew it would. And I didn't want the YouTube channel. 
But um, God has another <laughs> another idea in mind, right? And this it requires faith and obedience from my part. So I'm saying, Lord, I'm trusting in you. Lord, you see where we're at. Lord, but you promised. And so I bring back to God. Lord, you promised this. Lord, you said this. You said that. And so I understand when Evelyn was giving her testimony about the $20, right? I understand that. I totally oh, yes. get it. You're not alone. No, you are no. not alone. <laughs> and so, um, you know, how many times that you see your bank account and it's ready to go into negative, right? And you're like, Lord, but we're not supposed to be living like this, Lord, but this and that. And so I have to remind, I have to go into the word. I have to remind my little anxious self, settle down, stop it. God is not a liar. And so uh, I go back to the promises that God has given. And so uh, we are here today and we're going into our fourth year. Because we have remained faithful. Amen. And so Amen. know that what we sow into, it's good ground. And it's going to replenish. It's going to multiply. You may not see it right now. And it's not that, well, God hasn't answered. It's just a matter of when. It's just a matter of when. And we know that God is an on-time God. Amen? Amen. Just when we think. Just when we think he won't show up. Boom. Mm -hmm. Right? All of a sudden, things start happening. Right? And not too long ago, we were blessed and encouraged with um, Ale's and a day's testimony of how God came and just, just, you know, surprised them. The suddenly of God shows up, right? And when we least expect it, and we're like, and a day, right? She's like, what? But I'm pregnant and I'm going to go on maternity, but yet you promoted me and you give me a raise, right? So this is what God does. And so I'm like, if he does it for them, Lord, I'm, I'm, when's my turn? When's my turn? I'm waiting, Lord. <laughs> Waiting for God, right, to do what he has promised because there is a great work. There's, We've got a kingdom to build. And I said, Lord, the finances. I know you require faith of us, but God, we need the money. We need the moolah to build your kingdom, to expand it. And so it has been uh, a time where it's requiring a lot of prayer. I tell Dan, like, are you praying? Are you praying? <laughs> because the temptation is so, especially some of us that, like to be in control cool. that we want to just hurry up and, and take over and do it our way because God hasn't gotten to our timetable and God's like don't move don't do anything so we want to encourage you in your giving today uh, we'll pray and then as soon as we're done we're going to go into then our lesson amen so you can go ahead and stop it